All of the shows on the Pod Almighty Network are powered by Core Fusion, the secure managed hosting provider for all of your hosting, domain name registration, and voice over IP needs. CoreFusion.com. This is how we do it. There has been an urgent message to the past sent from the future. It's Illusionoid. And it is real, man, but not really real. Available now at potalmighty.com. And you can subscribe on iTunes. Welcome to the Wandering Ninja Show with our host, Terry Hodgkinson, and his guest, Owen Durkin. How you doing, Terry? Doing good, Mateo. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Glad to have you back. Thank you. Um, so you have a special guest with you today. I do. Um, a guy who's close to both of us. Yes. And a big part of both of our lives. Uh, so maybe you could tell the people how you guys met. Sure. Owen is a friend of mine for many years now, and uh, actually I run a, a meditation group on Facebook. And one time Owen uh, emailed me and asked a few questions about meditation, and we decided to get together because I knew Owen had played in a band at the time, and had seen him play a number of times and really respected his skill. And so we got together and basically had a discussion about meditation and uh, he asked me a few questions about it and perhaps the best way for him to approach it. And I said, well, I've, I've got this technology, which we call the MindFit Neural Trainer, and I think this would be a good opportunity for you to explore uh, meditation with. And, uh, and that's basically how we met. And then over the years, we developed a really good friendship. And even though Owen lives in Africa, he comes back every once in a while here to uh, Toronto, Canada, and uh, visits us. And so I'd just like to welcome Owen to the show. Thanks for being here, Owen, as my guest today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. And maybe you could uh, elaborate a little bit on your experience with the MindFit Neural Trainer and uh, whatever you want to say about it. Yeah, sure. Love to. Um, yeah, I would say that... Uh, I, I I'd always had a, a sort of a, a curiosity with uh, uh, meditation, and and as my my own interest sort of developed in in exploring that, um, you know, I reached out as you as you mentioned, and uh, wanted to find a, a way that I could incorporate um, you know some meditation practices in a, into my own uh, routine, and you know I'm not uh, exactly. Uh, you know, the most disciplined person in the world. So, uh, you know, to just sort of be left to my own devices would have been, um, you know, kind of a, a bit of a, an exercise in futility. So for me to actually have a, you know, the technology available that would actually help me to uh, sort of put myself in a, in a meditative uh, mindset and, and receive some of the benefits of, of meditation, you know, in that way. Um, and, I found it really, really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd just like to say that, you know, over knowing Owen for a number of years, when I first met Owen, he was just getting a position on a cruise ship. And he was going to be doing a, a, a sort of a six-month tour and playing, uh, you know, music on this ship. And he was telling me the amount of things that they had to know <laughs> in regards to being on this ship. And he says, well, today we had a fire drill, and then we had to learn, you know, this and do this. And everybody mm -hmm. who was part of the staff had to have responsibilities. And uh, you know, at right. times it was a bit overwhelming. And I remember you emailing me a few times, and, and maybe you can talk yeah. a little bit about that because I remember some of our correspondence. Sure, yeah. Um, well, it, the, what I did was uh, we did a, a six-month tour of the Mediterranean with a brand-new group. Uh, friends of mine that you know I've known and worked with uh, previously in the Persian Gulf years ago, but we'd sort of kind of gone our own ways and you know pursued our own you know musical adventures apart. So we had this opportunity to to kind of reunite, and it started with a uh, seven day crossing. I think six or seven days uh, crossing of the Atlantic Ocean from Florida to uh, Southampton in England, mm. and. Uh, 
you know, I'm a nervous flyer, so you can imagine <laughs> being out on the ocean uh, for seven days at, you know, at sea. Uh, you know, so, yeah, anxiety, nerves, everything on high exactly. alert, you know, and that's sort of my nature anyways. Uh, you know, I've always, you know, been predisposed uh, predispos- to, uh, to, you know, having uh, anxiety, right. I guess you would say. And compounded with the fact that, uh, you know, you're basically in school for two weeks when you when you become a staff member of a of a, of a cruise ship. You're you're whether you're, you're entertainment. We were guest entertainers, but you still have emergency duties on a, on a vessel. Mm-hmm. Everything from basic firefighting to crowd control, security, etc. And uh, you know, so we're it was pretty intense. Uh, on top of that, um, having to learn, you know, maybe 120 songs you know, live, you know, without a net. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the seat of your pants is like you hit the ground running. All right. And, uh, so that, and, and, you know, the, the, uh, the crew quarters are not exactly the most spacious. So if you're at all claustrophobic, maybe that's not (laughs) the lifestyle for you. It's, you know, so yeah, I mean, I, I found this, uh, the anxiety that I had struggled with previously, uh, sort of creeping back in. And at that point I'd, I'd made the effort to, uh, or made the decision to, you know, really embrace uh, some of the the, the guided audio meditations That's and the right. MindFit technology. Yeah. And what I noticed was, uh, with practice, uh, and and I kept it up for the entire cruise. You know, it wasn't just during the, uh, the, uh, the the crossing portion of our, or of the voyage there. You know, um, it was something you did on a regular basis. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Which and is how meditation really should be. Right. Yeah. It's so, oh, and uh, we've worked yeah. together in the past too on and, and, and a few things, but it's so weird or, or to see someone like you talk about anxiety, <laughs> <laughs> really, because, and, and Terry, maybe you can elaborate on this too, but I see him as such a courageous guy, like picking up, going to Africa, playing music in a strange country, or and we work on some with you writing some, some stuff, and mm-hmm. um I've seen you take on some pretty big, you know, giants in our world. And uh, I would never think, I would never think that. And yeah. it's strange how the mind works, right? Like, this, is, this is a huge misconception that when you see people who are really good at what they do, right. you know, that they have anxiety totally under control. As a matter of fact, a lot of times people who are high achievers mm-hmm. and high performers have gotten to be that way because the anxiety has pushed them to actually master certain things in their professional life but it doesn't necessarily mean that they they've mastered the anxiety right <laughs> so it's kind of like uh, you know <laughs> fear flight from fear or, yeah know, so yeah we, we you're so scared of it that you fight yeah, a lot of you know yeah. i have a, a really good friend who is extremely successful in the real estate business she lives in costa rica uh for sure a billionaire but most of her advancements in her career have come from fear in relation to pushing and always being a better achiever and a better business lady and a better, you know, sort of right. entrepreneur. So a lot of times people will get to these highly professional levels in our society and everybody looks up to them and says, it's amazing because all these things this person does, they, how could they have anxiety? How could they have a lack of confidence in certain areas? How could they have all these things that you and I might experience? Right, right, yeah. But you know what? People are people. Yeah. And people have these things that need to be worked out. Yeah, and I, I guess too because I, I figure that musicians have a, a stronger connection with spirituality or you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. just being artsy and I, maybe it's a misconception on my my part, but... Um, yeah, so it's, I'm glad you came in today. I'm learning. I'm learning, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And that's very true. No, I mean, there are certain levels that you find that you, you know, I can function on. Um, you know, you just get into a flow and, you know, I mean, I could be on, on stage in front of, you know, uh, 40 people or 4,000 people and I really don't care. It's the same five drums in front of me and, you know, it's, the, 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 I'm going to do the same job. Um, uh-huh. But then you, yeah, but then, you know, in other situations, for example, being on a cruise ship and I was, there were, there are times I, I thought I'm going to freak out. I'm not going to be able to handle this just uh-huh. because of the anxiety right, right. just creeps up on you. And, you know, and, and it can, uh, it can be overwhelming at times. So, Absolutely. So, so how was our wandering ninja friend? Mm-hmm. 
able to help you? Well, the main thing with Terry is, um, uh, you know, he was a, a fan of uh, of uh, one of the bands that I played with. Can I name the band? Yeah, it's sure. Yeah. A band called Sunny Boy Mick. It's a dear friend of mine uh, for I don't know, fifteen, many, many eighteen years. years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I was the regular drummer with Steve's band, and I did his record and. And, you know, I had always seen Terry out at, at these gigs and, you know, we sort of became friends and talked a little bit. And, you know, at that point, you know, I became more comfortable with with Terry and, and a little more familiar with his background and what he did. And so because of my my curiosity with 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 meditation and just wanting to take some steps in my own life, kind of overcoming, you know, a few of the things that I felt were really holding me back. And I found uh, myself being really comfortable um, with just opening up with Terry, you know, who is uh, just this great sounding board, this non-judgmental, um, you know, person where I could just kind of lay out what was sort of on my mind and kind of eating away at me. And, you know, the the, the feedback that I got uh, from Terry, not just using the, the MindFit technology, which is incredible, but but also just the one-on-one, the personal uh, coaching and and the friendship uh, as well um, and the other thing that I did uh, I'd like to mention is I picked up Terry's book uh, memoirs of a, a wandering ninja and that was like that's it's one of those books where you can you can refer back to that thing uh, every year you could reread that and gets it's like right. it's like watching your favorite movie and you can pull out one little nugget from that book that'll stick with you for weeks on end you know what I mean like yeah. so I mean I, I would say it was the the entire experience of using the mind fit technology of having a, a, you know a, that sort of non judgmental sounding board to just you know kind of dump some of the stuff that you can't always talk to your wife or your girlfriend or, or a family member or your buddies at work you know there's right. there's just times where what you need is that person who you know um, you can deal with that uh, has the the background the 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 experience and the wisdom. Uh, and the training to to take what you're saying and give you a a non biased and honest answer that's not going to placate you or or, or you know right. be condescending. So yeah, it's well, the whole package with Terry. Thanks. So okay, so tell us about you know you, we've mentioned mind fit a few times, right? So maybe you could tell us a little bit about that so the listeners can. Yeah, sure. The, the MindFit technology, this is a, what we call is the neural trainer, is really a pair of glasses and a pair of headphones, and you have this little black box that says MindFit on it, and it all coordinates with, like, your iPhone or your Galaxy phone or an MP3 player, and you put all this together, and then you play these auditory sessions, which we are calling strategic mind messaging sessions or meditations. And we have them on different things. We have, you know, programs related to stress, anxiety, to performance, to weight loss, to smoking cessation. We have 30 different programs that people can listen to uh, for what it is that they need to listen to. And what it does is in this relaxed state of being, which we call is the alpha, theta, brainwave state. It's in between sleep and consciousness. You're just sort of hovering there, relaxed. And these messages are being played and absorbed by a deeper part of your mind. Some people call it the subconscious part of your mind. Mm -hmm. This is the part that absorbs the messages. And then when you go out in your everyday life and you're doing the things that you need to do, you start playing these messages back. So instead of hearing old programming, such as I'm going to be nervous or I'm going to freak out or, you know, this is not for me, you're playing these new messages like, I can handle this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do great with this i'm breathing deeply i'm feeling relaxed and i am ready and that's a whole different perspective than what you were running before in your mind so this is what the actual technology does is helps to retrain the way that a person responds to situations and behaves in situations (laughs) i've heard the mind described as a jukebox where you get into a situation and the jukebox sold situation number 32. And 32, they pick up the record, you put it on, and it starts playing that. And that's how your mind reacts. It mm-hmm. reacts, yeah. plays number 32, and, oh, my God, this is really crappy. I, I don't want to get it out of here. And So basically, you're scratching that record or getting rid of that number 32 and putting a new record exactly. in its spot, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, what else 
Terry, would you do besides that type of therapy? What when you see someone come in with, let's say, anxiety? What, where do you want to get them right away? What what is something that? How do you attack it? As you know, I have a clinic. I have a coaching right. clinic here in Toronto, and I see a lot of people and have over the last fifteen years. Basically, the first thing I need to do is bring them to a neutral state because a lot of people come into me and they're overly anxious, they're overly worked up, and I need to get them to a balanced state. And the quickest way to do that is just to have them breathe and get in touch with their breathing so that they follow their breathing in and out, and that will bring them to a point where their mind is not racing. See, a lot of stress and anxiety just comes from the mind racing back and forth on different situations in our life, on what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen next week, what's going to happen a year from now, or, geez, did I really do that in the past? Like, oh my God, you know, so you're either dwelling on the past or you're concerned about the future. And so you get this turmoil because your mind just keeps racing and all this stuff. But when you get in touch with just a simple exercise like breathing, you stop that you know, duality happening between past and future. And you come to this place called now. Here you are right now. And then from there, you can proceed to actually work with the mind and condition it in a way that's going to be more favorable and more beneficial for you. Hmm. Then now, right? One one foot in tomorrow and one one foot in the past and not thinking about today, right? Well, you know, the interesting thing is, is that before Owen and I ever had any of these discussions, yeah. I would watch him drum, and I would go down to the to the you know place where he would be playing with Sonny Boy Mick on a Saturday evening or a Friday, and I would watch him drum, and I'd go, "This guy's in the now." Have you seen him drum before? No, well, you, I, I haven't. All right. Well, when you're you know you see him right, and he's like, bah, 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 and and I'm watching it, and I'm going, as you know, I'm a martial artist, right, and I've right. studied martial arts right. since I've been 12 years old, so I'm you know ran my own professional schools, yeah. and I looked at Owen one time when he came over, and I said, Owen, good kung fu, man. <laughs> I, like, I remember that. Huh? What? Look. He kind of looked at me strange, like, good kung fu? I said, yeah, awesome kung fu. Well, a lot of people don't know it, but kung fu actually doesn't mean martial arts. The actual definition of kung fu means an artist at work. It means a job well done. And wow. that's what kung fu means. Wow, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, oh, and what's it like to pick up? and uh, you, So now you have some tools from Terry, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you survived the boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't throw anybody overboard or jump, no. right? So, um, And you pick up your life, man. And you're like, you know, you're my buddy and we talk yeah. a daily bit. And you're like, okay, I'm off to Africa. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like to, for well, me, again, that's yeah. major anxiety. That's like, sure. I couldn't do that. Man. <laughs> but again, it's it's down to being able to be receptive to that whole concept of being in the moment and right. in the now. I mean, the way it all started for me with Africa is... Uh, I was sitting at a at a coffee shop and pulled out my Facebook thing and forgot to turn the chat off, which I usually do, you know. Otherwise, you get flooded with stuff. And and then this message popped up from a a musician that I had known for a long time saying, "How would you like to go to Morocco?" I'm like, "Yep, I would." <laughs> and within two weeks, uh, you know, we had finished uh, some some real quick shotgun rehearsals and got on a plane and. Next thing I know, I was sitting in a in a club in Casablanca, <laughs> and that's sort of where the adventure kind of took off. Uh, I, I did two months in this amazing uh, environment, uh, you know, in Africa, and um, the agency that I was with at the time uh, offered me an opportunity to go to uh, a few different places, and I and I chose uh, uh, what I would thought I considered an even more interesting place, and that was. Cote d'Ivoire in West Africa, which is, you know, about uh, six hours south by plane. And they had just finished a, a very uh, messy 10-year uh, civil war. And they were, uh, they had been at peace for about six months and they were digging out. And, you know, so the agency was just sort of um, kind of reestablishing relation right. with, with the venue there. And he said, uh, you're going to be a bit of a, of a guinea pig if you want to go over there. I said, bring it, let's go. And, uh, so be, just being able to respond to um, opportunities that present themselves in a spontaneous way and, and being in the now. And, and, and instead of feeling anxiety or, you know, your mind racing and running all those right. old, old failure messages or, uh, the, you know, those kind of things, I found myself uh, being, how can I say it, um, you know, more challenged to, to, to just uh, 
accept what was happening uh, with an attitude of, of, of gratefulness and, in, and a sense of adventure. And, and so one of the things that Terry, I want to mention that re- working with Terry really, really helped me with was sort of getting reacquainted with my creative side. Because what happens for, you know, as an artist, Terry mentioned, you know, when I'm on, my, on, on stage with a band, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I'm in my, my own little world. And, right. you know, uh, anything could happen. I, I probably wouldn't. You know, one time we were we were tracking drums in in California, and I was working with a, 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 a producer named Nick Blagona who'd done all the Deep Purple records and all sorts of other big bands. And there was, you know, we were just having a blast doing what we were doing. There, there was an earthquake, and we didn't even know it till afterwards because you're just you're there, you're in the zone, and you have no idea. Right, and then I, in the now, then you see uh-huh. it on the news a few right. hours later. But uh-huh. Terry really helped me to to park all that stuff and really reconnect with my my creative energy and my creative side and with that you know you when you're in that creative zone you're you're not second guessing yourself you know even on stage you're not thinking well is this going to be musically appropriate am i going to screw up you're just flowing you're just in the zone and you're and you're flowing and you're grateful for those opportunities so um for me it's just a it's one adventure after another you know going from morocco to to uh cote d'ivoire and then on to uh dakar senegal with for a whole other pile of experiences and i'm going to be bringing a band back there and and hosting a little uh five five day uh drum uh, festival in dakar in in uh, december as well so it, it must be it must be something to bring music because music is happiness and you know people use mm-hmm. it to celebrate um to a place where they just finished civil war so i guess it was like importing mm-hmm. a little bit of happiness right like a, yeah absolutely. and being part of that crew what was that like Oh, it was fantastic. Uh, the group that I play with there, um, it's, well, I'm, I'm sort of running, I'm the musical director. It's called The Syndicate. And the reason I chose that name is that, to me, the word syndicate represents sort of pulling influences from different places and putting them all together right. to create one new common sort of thing. And that's that's sort of the process that we've been going through. So I'll, I'll bring, you know, musicians from as far as New Zealand or we got a singer from... Uh, Romania from Transylvania last <laughs> year and another girl from Chile and and a local musician uh, a guy named Benny Will who's a fantastic uh, vocalist who you know um, again you just find yourself in these in these situations where you know you have a you know sort of how can you put it lightning just kind of strikes yeah. at the same place you know and, and you pull yeah. it all together and and uh, and what goes off on stage when you get all these different influences from all these different people it's just just incredibly positive. Yeah. What were um, what were the people? And I know, I know you've Terry, you've traveled all over, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what were the people like? Knowing that you came into a place where a civil war, so they're used sure. to hearing gunshots, right? And now they're hearing the drums and maybe people laughing. Did you notice that when the music went on, people were different, or or they appreciated your music or what you brought to them a lot oh, yeah. more than? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because it's sort of ingrained in in the, the culture. There are uh, the people of Cote d'Ivoire are uh, incredibly spiritual. Uh, they're very in touch with 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 music. You know, uh, on a communal level. You know, it's not it's no strange thing for me to to sit there at a, at a cafe and 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 if I've got a djembe in my hand to start playing. And then you know, uh, there's been oper- there's been uh, occasions where. You know, I was sitting there just having a drink, and and uh, I had my djembe with me, and and uh, the wait the waitress she pulled out a djembe as well, and she sat down, and I gotta admit she kicked my butt, you know, playing these <laughs> these authentic, uh, you know, six eight Afri- African rhythms and chanting, and it was just a beautiful thing. So they're they're already tapped in to you know the, their own uh, musical history and their own it's a, it's a very big part of their culture. So uh, I think. You know, for them to park that that the, the the civil war that went on for so many years and 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 sort of reacquaint with that with their musical uh, and creative side as well, um, it was just a real natural thing. Yeah, so I ended up working with a lot of the local musicians and recording with them and and becoming friends. And so it's it's a great experience for sure. How um, how much of this do you credit to working or being working with Terry and being in the now? Oh would, yeah, would you be here? Would you be there? <laughs> you know what I mean, type well, of thing. If... I, I would, I would say that I would definitely. Uh, I would not be the person that I am 
at this moment. Absolutely. Uh, I was, I was pretty much so shut down, um, by the anxiety issues, uh, that I, I would have to say really robbed me of the joy of life for, for too many years. You know, I'm watching my children grow up. I'm watching myself become more distant with, with my wife and, just feeling a sense of detached, never in the moment, never in appreciating what's happening in front of you. You know, you're always preoccupied. You're always, you know, absent mentally. And working with Terry and the things that he's helped me to actually incorporate into my life uh, and practice. Now, you know, when I face some of the same challenges, my intuition is different. Before it would... I would naturally default to some negative message or it would just shut down or it would just reinforce that whole failure mentality. Mm -hmm. Now what I'm finding, and I have felt for a number of years, is, as you said, that, that, that old record's been scratched, you know, now, right. now it's, it's new information. It's, you know, intuitively I, I respond to things a lot different. I don't feel, uh, you know, that, that, that same negativity and, Interestingly enough, what happens is I notice people responding to me differently mm-hmm. as well. Uh, you, you know, I found that you, you, you start getting more opportunities to, to do things that represent who you are as an artist or, right. or as a human being. You know, you just, it's almost like energy attracts energy. And if what, what you're putting out is positive and what you're feeling and experiencing every day is positive, that's, it just, yeah, it emanates that way, you know. Yeah, it opens up channels that allow you to reciprocate and right. to receive exactly. and, and to make use of so many more connections that can come your way. You know, Mateo, when a person is locked up within their own mind, what happens is basically they start to lose a lot of their opportunities because they're not open to them. Opportunities are abundant. Opportunities are everywhere. Where you're sitting right now, there are opportunities, but we don't often see them because we have our blinders on and we're looking at one thing specifically and that's all we see. But like Owen just said, as he opened up his mind a little bit more, felt more comfortable and said, I'm ready. And then all of a sudden, it's amazing what can happen. And and listening to your show and, and being part of you know the, the few episodes that we put together here, um, I'm starting to learn that this is not by accident what you do. <laughs> These uh, Putting people on the right path or getting in the now and getting positive thought process brings positivity. So uh, it, it's great to see. It's great to see what you can do with people, and I hope that people do tune in more. Um, can you give, so that people have, uh, before we go, one tool, one thing today to work on? Someone that is suffering right now that is... You know, filled with anxiety, like when you, you know, and I've been there, and no one's been there, and just give us something. Give us a... Yeah, you know, probably the best thing that I could say about that right now is that no matter what you have experienced up until this point in your life, no matter what it's been, no matter how hard or how challenging it has been for you, that this day, from this day forward on, can be different. It can be different. And all you need to do is leave a little bit of space in your mind. It doesn't mean that you have to ignore any of the pain or any of the challenges. You're not denying them. You're right. just leaving a little bit of space and saying, you know what? Okay, this is what my life is like today. Doesn't necessarily mean it's what it has to be from this point on as I start adjusting slowly, gently, as I start adjusting my perception and the way that I look at things. Then Things, the, oper- the obstacles of the past become the opportunities of the future because I grow from them, I become stronger, and I become wiser. Makes sense, yeah. doesn't it? Absolutely. And if I could just add one thing really quickly Please. to that, um, and it just occurred to me now as Terry was talking, um, the other huge thing uh, for me was I really felt like I, gave, I got my life back when I was able to uh, not be reliant on pharmaceuticals, you know, medication anxieties prescribed from my doctor, which I felt stole a part of my personality and and kept me sort of locked out from who I really was as a person. Well, I've been been, um, medication-free for a number of years now, and that that would not have happened had I not uh, had the opportunity to embrace some of the technologies that, you know, through MindFit and through personal coaching, 
with Terry and the uh, guided audio meditations and stuff like that. So, and as a, as a, a former sufferer, you know, uh, with pretty chronic anxiety, it, um, I would just like to say to anyone that, that is listening, that has had those or is dealing with those issues, uh, it's, it's very, very, very controllable. It's very manageable and there's excellent tools available to you. So from my own personal experience. So if you've stumbled upon this podcast, it's not by accident. <laughs> this was a good one today and I hope that, that we can continue to help people. And uh, from Terry and Owen. Thanks, Matteo. I'd just like to mention yeah. that if people want to see a number of events that I have coming sure, up, please. So go to my website, innerouteru.com, and I have all the events listed that I'm doing uh, in the next little while on my website, innerouteru.com. So, innerouteru.com. Um, you can catch us on iTunes and the Pot Almighty Network. Yep. And uh, please continue to listen and get some help. Awesome. Thanks, Matteo. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Owen. Thanks, Thank Owen. You. Pleasure.